Here's one of the most recognisable faces in Te Ao Māori, gracing our screens for the last 40 years. Known by many names, including Rawiri. He did his first theatre show, but he wanted to keep it hidden, so he named himself Rawiri Paratini. Paka. Say it till you mean it! Say it! Peter. And the son of God himself! and Joe Hudson. Don't go getting yourself all worked up. I just came to ask your brother's advice. If we neglect the language, all this talk is really, really nothing. His influence on and off the screen has hugely impacted the country and paved the way for many more to follow. Our Pathfinder, Rawiri Paratene. Make it believable and keep it true. Wahine Māori are hardwired to think about what's good for people. I know that my lived experience can help so many others. The photographs, the record of how divisive that period was. I never stand up there and say, I speak for all Māori. I just oh, try to do the best I could with something that I could do well. I'd like to do that. Well, I'm not acting anymore or doing any stuff like that. I have what's called aphasia. And before, after my, my strokes, um, I didn't used to talk with people, you know, because I was um, hakama, hakama to try and and uh, korero. I love to walk. I walk all around here, which is, it's a beautiful place to walk around. I do miss um, being an actor and a director and all of that stuff. But I've done heaps and I've been all over the blimmin' world and yeah. Koroa a Rawiri e noho ana ki tāmaki. He oe ko tōna tsimatanga ka kitea mai i te nōta. First we lived in uh, Ruawai. And that was nice too. I think my... They had a, um, a factory home. It's still there. Whenever I go past there, I always have a look at that old house. We had a um, piano and um, I still can't um, play it, but um, I used to do um, Pa Pa Black Sheep and we used to play that. And we had an old radio and um, we used to just get the, what's called now the national program and um, they used to play opera and stuff like that. And so I used to sing operatic versions of Baba, Black Sheep and all of that sort of stuff. I used to go, uh, bye, bye, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, and, and I was all in Māori. Actually, when I was really, really little in Ruawai, that was my first gig because I had a go at the talent quest and I won. I sang, um, please, please help me, I'm falling in love with you. I think that's by Jim Reeves. Oh. Please help me, I'm falling 
in love with you. Turn away from temptation. I'm coming on through. Ākoa ngā tini mīharotanga ko kitea e rāwiri puta noa i tēnei ao. Ko ōna tūranga waiwai kei roto mai i te nōta. He here koa kitea e kore rawa e motu mōna ko tōna whānau. That part of his upbringing in Hokianga is really important to me because it wasn't until his father, my papa, passed away um, later, later in life I might have been 10, you know, so Dad was a grown man, but my papa, um, obviously they'd been removed from their Turanga Waiwai, and my grandparents, Dad's parents, were part of that whole generation, particularly my nana, who had been, well, violence was done to them, physical, spiritual, cultural, and so the trauma that was associated with that separated them, my father's generation, from their homeland, from their reo, from their whenua. And so, returning back to those places, um, my papa passed away, and for the first time we went to Whirinaki, which is on the South Hokianga, that's my Te Hukatu side. And the way I remember it is Dad saying that he never knew about these people, he never knew this valley, he never knew that side of his whakapapa and until his father passed away and was lying on Mātai Aranui Marae. And it impacted him so deeply that he uprooted us from our city living and moved straight back to Whirinaki and we did the rest of our childhood there. And it's a connection that is such a deeply ingrained part of my world, part of my politics, part of my mahi, part of my kaupapa. And so Dad making that move was for us. You can have more of that. Oh, no, no, I'll only have that bit. There you go. You have that. Tau tōku pāpa ko te ramaroa, a kupe, te maunga, ko whirina ki te awa, te whenua tapu hoki, ko mātai are nui te marae, ko te hukutu, te hapu, ko ngāpuhi, te iwi, ko hokianga nui a kupe, te moana, ko matawhao te waka, te rātaha, he taha nō nō tōku pāpa, ko rākau tapu te maunga, ko mutukraka te marae, ko ngai tūpoto te hapū, ko te raroa te iwi, nō hoki ana tūturu tōku pāpa. Well, I remember I was in Ruawai when I was seven, and that's when I got um, confirmed and I remember that because my mum was a beautiful, beautiful cook and she made a um, banana cake. And I was looking for where my blimmin' my cake was, but they gave it to the blimmin' the, the clergy and all of them. And I was, and you know, I was, and I said, "Excuse me, um, my mum made a made a, a cake. Uh, where is it? Because I want to have some." And they said, "Blah blah blah," for the priests and all of them. And I said, "No, but that was for, that was for us." Yeah. Yeah. So I. Would, I objected. I, that was one of my first uh, protests. <laughs> Ia rāwiri e tau tama tonu ana, ka rangona e ia ngā tini mamai e korapa ana i te hunga Māori. Ka kitea e ia he oranga i roto e ngā mahi porotehi a ngā tama toa. You know, there's some great people. Some of them are gone. Well, this is in Wellington. Just before we 
where we went to the parliament and I can see some good mates. There's my real good mate, uh, Paul Kotara. Gone now. Brilliant man. I think that's me. Still handsome, mate. Eh? Still, still got it. Ahakoa tōna ihu hupe, i kite a te kaunga o ana haipapa, ka whakarewa ngea tōna tū ki roto mai i a ngā tamatoa. I went to the um, Young Māori Leadership Conference at the University of Auckland with um, Dr. Ranginui Walker. Yeah, and we did uh, heaps of stuff there. Yeah, he was a, he was a great, great man, uh, Rangi. We ended up camped out on the on the steps. That's where I got to know um, your mother. Yeah. I tae atu taku māma, toku māma, ki te tahi uh, noho ki paremata, hei huarangatira ki tā tame. Ka tahi ka wehe ki tōku papata. So she arrived with tame and left with dad. But as a result, tame looks on us with very special favour and always asks how our mum is. So that was... And one of the real special things is that that's illustrated from my dad and Tammy, two very strong willed Māori men that they can carry on this friendship despite my dad stealing my mum of Tammy. What, what were you fellas fighting for? Well, for the, for the reo and for our dignity for all of us. Well, I think the first thing that we're, the most essential thing that we're trying, we're trying to achieve is to make the public aware that the Māori language is not dead and has no real hope of dying. Um, the Māori language is a very real and living thing. You can see this, it's a, it's a prime language of the marae. Not only that, but um, half of our towns, well, more than half of our towns in New Zealand are Māori ones, our street names are Māori ones, and so the it's a language that's really part of um, everyone's everyday life. My auntie Dado, she helped me to do that korero. And I remember her saying, you know, walk down, but don't turn your back to people because of this. So walk and then turn back and then you can talk. I uh, Ngātamatoa Student Council i Tauapō, ko whiwhi i tētahi taonga. Um, and I managed to sit at the table with all those Ngātama the Walker brothers and all of them. And I remember saying and asking the question, how come you chose my father who had no deal at the time? And you had, you had Tamme and you had all these others fluent speakers. And I won't say who answered this, he said, because he was the only one not stoned. <laughs> For my kids, and now for my mokos and my mokopunarua, for them. I believe that we changed things. You know, when you watch the, the weather now, they have all the Māori names. More of the same for Tamaki Makoto, Auckland. He atako ua ua some early showers that will clear in the afternoon. No my hari mai kia parakui here. It's Friday the 8th of April. E ngā ruranga o ngā iwi huri noa tēnā koutou katoa. I love that. And 
I always think I've been part of that. Ka haere te wā, ka eke a Rāwari ki te pane kire tanga o te ao whakaari. Whiria ngā taura here tangata o Paikea, kia pakari ai te iwi. Weave together the threads of Paikea so that our line remains strong. It's about connection, and that's about two, two or more. It has to be connection, and um, the great actors, they always have that. What? I think I'm not real. I don't mind seeing hallucinations. I'm just bugging if I start talking to them. An actor in, on stage has to walk into a world that they feel is the truth. And for Rawiri, the truth was boom, boom, the connection with the audience. And he couldn't break that. Rawiri naturally lives in that relationship as a person. He has directed that relationship and that understanding into acting. That's why it's so good. Kia tāe ki taua wā. Ko tāku he kimi rongo wā. Rawiri is always in the moment. He's not trying to persuade the audience about anything. He's in the moment and they hook onto him and they go on the journey with him. Now he had that talent when he auditioned for drama school and he was a kid with virtually no experience. Nola Miller, who ran the drama school, she spotted it and she really pushed Rawiri. And then Tony Richardson came down from the Mercury and he spotted it immediately and hired him and put him into lead roles really quickly. And audiences, he steps on stage, he takes his first breath and they've spotted it. They know it. I'm wondering if there's a connection between the Father of Christmas and God the Father. Maybe Jesus and me are cousins. <laughs> you married jokers are related to everyone. <laughs> Don't you see? He knew that I was good at acting, but I liked to be a director and a producer too. But, uh, Ian, he used to say, nah, never mind all that stuff. You're a bloody actor. That's how he used to talk. You're a bloody actor. Stop doing all of that other stuff. You were born to act. Just do that. He's quite uh, harsh. But having said that, Again, I was his favourite, and um, and he used to look after me. The first time that I saw Shakespeare, it was at the Mercury Theatre. I was really young, and uh, somehow I understood all of it and those words rang to me. Actually that's why I decided to be an actor and I did okay. <laughs> Ka whai wāhi atu ia ki te kāhui pōkai whenua matua o te Globe Theatre. 
Taira wā ki te wā, ka whakamauri hia tētahi o ngā whakari a rurutau, ko Troilus and Cressida. I whakaritea e rāwari, kia hari atu i tētahi tira whakari Māori ki rānana, ki reira whakatutu ai te puehu. I liked playing um, Pandarus. It was hard for me. I was fine with uh, Shakespeare, but, well, you know, I've, lo- I've lost my reo. I'm going to get it back, but um, yeah, it was it was really hard for me. Well, the bard is my hero, and um, he's a genius, and he he understands the world, and he understands human nature. It's good and it's bad. He might be a cheeky fella when you're in a conversation with him. He might be leading you up the garden path. When he gets on stage in front of an audience, he cannot help but be truthful and connected to them. He earns their trust and he keeps their trust. And it's because of his true heart. It's funny because I make some really, really uh, tekka. <laughs> I do. And, um, but yeah, acting is about truth. So you've been busy then? Yeah, yeah, it's been good. You know, I've got a gallery interested, had some good shows. How about you? We've been all right. Going from a man who all of the tools of communication, he was a master of, a tohunga of, reading, writing, speaking. Right from the beginning, you knew this wasn't for you. You stole some of my kids' clothes from the line. To go from that in an instant, losing all of that in a second, that for me was a bit of a mamai pody. It's like, oh, that's heartbreaking for him. A bit heartbreaking for me too. What is that gonna mean? The first stroke, maybe a few years ago, three, four years ago. Oh, that was a big moment for our whanau. It's a big moment for our whanau. He was in Australia rehearsing, about to do uh, quite a bit of an international tour with, I wanna say, Prince of Arabia, something like that. Something, yeah, massive production. And we got a call. Um, my stepmum called us to say she was off to Aussie because he'd just had a stroke. So that was a bit of a shock for all of us. We also didn't understand what that meant. It was our first intimate experience of understanding what a stroke does. I te taurua manorua te kou i hoki atu a Rāwiri ki te papa whakari. Ko Rāwiri tonu te papa. He tua hangata i hangamana. Kia whakanui i ngā mahi kua mahia e ia i te ao whakari. Koenei tana tūnga whakamutunga. Here are some of... Here are some things about my show. This is a celebration. Woo-hoo! Of me. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know if you know, but I have... Aphasia. What's that? Um, well, uh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I tōna piko ngā tuarā, kua pakiri anō tōna kōrero. Nā whai anō, kua ngā kau titikaha anō te tangata nei. Now, no problem. I can talk and I talk to people and, yeah, I like talking again. Which is funny, you know, because you've done blimmin the bard and heaps of that. When I think about my papa, when I think about dad, I think about my nana, his mum, from Motukraka, from Ngaitupoto, and her strength 
and prioritising the safety of her children, which is why she chose not to speak to them in Te Reo Māori. We have come from that, it has taken us three, four generations to put Te Reo back into our whakapapa. And it has been off the back of the work of so many, like Ngata Matua and so many others, over generations. But we have gone from her to Dad now has Mokopuna, who are winning top scholar awards in Reo Rangatira. And I often think about that full circle of Nana and then Dad and that generation who were like, wait a minute, this is wrong. And then our generation, and then our children are like, kia Māori, te reo Māori. And they're beautiful. And I think about my Nana, you know, we're healing her. Our mukapuna are healing our tupuna to this day. I think I'm rich. I think I am. I mean, look where we're from. Everywhere in Aotearoa is blimmin' beautiful. We're all rich, and my father used to say that too. I'm a very, very rich man. He's still the same person. <laughs> and we just needed some time. Um, he had to work hard to, to gain back those tools. It's sort of like, well, it's a different life now. A good one, yeah. But yeah, that, that initial moment was shock and a bit of grief as we understood how things were going to change, yeah. But then, ki te ao marama again, when we can see actually, He's still him. <laughs> and he's showing us, there's a lesson, a lesson to be learned about adjusting and making the most out of your life, whatever it throws at you, you know. To have those, those tools and skills change, oh, that's a major. It's like an athlete who, use, who loses that ability, you know, um, but actually, the passion for his creativity and everything he's done, nothing can change that. He's gentle. He's gentle and, and um, yahoo e tamariki anga, he nanakia, he nanakia tēnei. Uh, taringa pūkeko, upoko māro, whakaputa mōhio, uh, wera momo katoa. And Dad remained gentle. That's what made the whale rider roll one of his best, because we didn't recognise that grumpy, hard-ass koro in that movie, because that's not him. He's gotten, he's grown a lot as a father. Ko kou mātua haere ia, i ngā tauko hipa. In two more years, I'll, I'm going to be 70. Yep. Looking forward to that. I might have to buy a, a really good Italian wine. A good one. Kia poto, kia poto. Te mama e poto e. Waha. A mama. Te mate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>